guys? I hope you're excited to be here. This is, I don't even remember what video uh, number this is, but I'm excited to be here regardless. So yes. you'll notice that we're somewhere different. We're actually at the church in the middle office um, today because our dog kept barking in the last video. So we decided we'll leave her at home and just be here. So I'm so excited still to be here with you though. <laughs> yeah. So we have some congratulations to hand out. Congratulations because it is a challenge of the week. Challenge of the week. People. Congrats and we are proud of Zahira who emptied the dishwasher for her mom without being asked. Come on, that is the job that I don't like doing. Wyatt made breakfast for his family right after Anthem Kids on Sunday. No way. Wyatt, what'd you make? Let us know. So Wyatt, if COVID wasn't a thing, would you come make me breakfast? Whoa, that would be great. <laughs> right after church, we'll set you up in the kitchen over there. Anyways. And hi at the kids! What is up? What is up? So excited that you join us here again on a yes. Sunday morning for Anthem Kids. You'll notice that we are not in our house anymore. And that is because our dog Rosa keeps barking every time we try and record a video. So we said forget you Rosa. We're going to come to the church and we're just going to use the office here at the boardroom table. So that is where we are. And I know you're excited about that and that you really cared about that information. <laughs> So, some congratulations are in order. Because it was the challenge of the week, people who did the challenge of the week! <laughs> yes, okay, so challenge of the week. There were a lot of you who did it, which is very exciting. So, number one, Zahira emptied the dishwasher for her mom without being asked. Wow, the di emptying dishwasher is the worst. I, I don't like doing it. It's not the worst job, I just don't enjoy it because when you need a clean dish, you could just go in the dishwasher and grab it. <laughs> Wyatt cooked his family breakfast right after Sunday church. Come on. I like that. Wyatt, good job. Nice. Good on you. Way to get it done right away. You're like, I don't want to think about the challenge of the week the rest of the week, so I'm just going to do it now. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hunter did the laundry yesterday without being asked. Did the laundry yesterday. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Without being asked. Come on! This yes. week, doing the laundry. Now, here's the question though. Did you just put the clothes in the washer and the dryer and then leave them in the dryer? Or did you also empty them and put them in the laundry? A few moments later. There's something about folding <laughs> clothes that I hate. So good on you. Yeah, laundry is like eight chores in one. It really is. Yes. So but good, good, job, good job, Jackson. Good job. Hunter. Oh, sorry, Hunter. But his brother Jackson. Woo! He cleaned his whole bedroom, both sides, his brother's side and his side. Oh, what a servant. All by himself. What a servant. That is amazing. Cleaning up someone else's mess. And what? that kind of segues into what we're going to be talking about because what Jackson did was very generous and selfless mm -hmm. towards his brother. He didn't have to clean up his brother's side, but he did it anyways. It's and true. that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about what it means to be generous. Come on, generosity. generosity, generosity. So being generous is doing things for others that's kind of a sacrifice to you. It's selfless. It's selfless. So for example, sometimes I fold Calvin's laundry. That doesn't, that doesn't help me in any way. I don't particularly enjoy folding clothes. Or does it help you but in some way? It's generous to Calvin. What are things that you do that are generous? A few moments later. Okay, well, I can think of one time that I was generous. When I was a kid, probably around some of your age, but my dad was really, really great at teaching us to see other people and to see needs in other people. So I remember when we lived on, in Ontario, we would go to a baseball game every summer in Toronto. Toronto Blue Jays. The, the Blue Jays games, they're the best. And so outside of the stadium, there would often be homeless people who were asking for money, asking for food. And when we were going to the baseball game, there's lots and lots of people um, who, were, who were going. So there were many, many people just walking by and we were gonna be one of those people until my dad decided that he had enough of walking past homeless people. He wanted to help somebody and be generous to them. So my dad took my hand 
dragged me over to the hot dog cart and we bought a man a hot dog and an iced tea. And I was probably only, I was probably your age, like eight to 10 years old. And that had a really big impact on my life because my dad had me hand the man his hot dog and his iced tea. And my dad encouraged me to say God bless to him. And it was really, really powerful to me, obviously, because now I'm 27 and I still think about that act of generosity that I was encouraged to do. And we can do small things like that, but it can have a huge impact on someone's life and also our life, too. Yeah, and being generous means it, it takes effort. Mm -hmm. You have to look for opportunities that are around you in order to be able to bless someone and, and brighten their day. And I think the, the cool thing about, about Larry is that um, when he does something that is generous and, and, and giving someone uh, something that's, that they're in need of or whatever, he always takes that opportunity to also tell them about Jesus, which is part of the great commission that Jesus gives us before he, before he goes back to heaven after he was crucified and, and stuff. And it's part of what our mission as Christians is which is to tell other people about Jesus and bring the good news of Jesus to other people. So being generous is a great way that we can do it because it gives people a need, a physical need, something they really need in that moment, mm -hmm. but also meets their spiritual need to be able to know Jesus. Yeah, so that's a little bit about what we're going to talk about today, being mm -hmm. generous. And our friends Carl and Cassie are going to come right now, and oh. they're going to tell us Carl. a little bit more. Carl, Carl, so Carl! Excited. Cassie, I keep, I feel like I disrespect Cassie all the time, but Carl and Cassie, there we go, I did the same level of excitement, yes. Carl, Carl, okay. we're going to watch what they have to say now. Hey there, chicken nuggets, it's me, Carl, welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow Hosted by Carl, where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to Grow TV! Hey, how are y'all? I'm so glad you can make it today. I just got the world's best news. I just saved up a bunch of money to get the gift I've always wanted. And guess what it is? Nope, not that. Not that either. One more guess. Close, but not quite. I saved up enough money to buy a hamster ball. A human hamps uh, hamster ball. Ever seen one of those? It's like this huge blue plastic ball that you can climb in and walk inside of. I've even seen people walk in water with them. Isn't that crazy? So as soon as I get done with this episode of Grow TV, I'm gonna go to the store and buy it. Oh, hey, Carl. What up? How's it going? It's going fine. Yeah? I wanted to ask you a question. Well, shoot. Well, actually, I need a favor. Sure, anything, you got it. Great, because I was curious if I could borrow some money, because I want to go out tonight with some of my friends and go watch a movie, then we we're going to go out to eat. Oh, I don't know. Jeez, man, I really, really want to go. I haven't been able to hang out with my friends in a really, really long time, and the movie's supposed to be really good. Well, it's just, I wanted to kind of buy a gift for myself. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, but you would pay me back, right? I would definitely try. Um. Please, Carl, please, 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 I'm begging you, please, just this once, please. Okay, okay, you can have the money. Really, Carl? Yes. You're the best. Thank you so much. Pin, yes. pin, pin is uh, 9144. Thanks, Carl, again. Well, See I hope, you later, okay? Yeah, hope you have fun. Yeah, thanks. Just, um, just remember that, uh, never mind. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hey, Carl. Oh, hey, Cassie. Whoa, what's wrong? <sighs> I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of bummed out. Well, I finally got enough money to buy myself a gift that I've wanted for a long time. What? You saved up enough to buy the human hamster ball? Yeah. Carl, that's great. I guess so. What's wrong? Didn't you buy it? Well, I was going to, but then my buddy Andy showed up, and he wanted the money, so I gave him the money. Yeah, I mean, he really wanted it, but I didn't know if I wanted to give it to him at first, but then I did, but now I'm not so sure I should have. What makes you say that? Well, now I can't get the ball! All that money I saved up all went to waste. I saved for nothing. Well, that's not true. Sure it is. I worked hard for that money. Now it's gone. Nothing to show for it. Well, I know you might not want to hear it, Carl, but I'm proud of you, and I think God is too. What? Why? Well, what you did was very selfless and very generous. Generous? Is that some, uh, some sort of cheese? 
No, it means to give people something that's more than what's expected. Is that a good thing? It's a very good thing. It says in 2 Corinthians that God loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. giver. And those who give generously will receive generously. So God likes it when we're generous? Of course. And if you remember, God has been very generous to us. So we need to do what God does. Well, how has God been generous? Well, you know how God has not only forgiven all of your sins, loved you beyond measure, and given you more than you can ever know. Yeah. Well, that's God being generous, and we are called to be generous as well. So when I'm given the chance to help other people with gifts, I shouldn't be upset? You shouldn't be. You should be joyful and happy that you have the opportunity to be generous. When we give willingly without being forced to do it, God's love is being shown. I guess that reminds me of the time that Jesus fed the 5,000. Oh yeah. Or 5,000 people were hungry, but they had no food. Mm. Then they found the little boy who had two fish and five loaves of bread. Yep, nowhere near the amount of food that they needed. But somehow Jesus multiplied the food so that everyone could be fed. There's even leftovers. Exactly. See, Carl, even if we have a little and choose to be generous with it, God can make amazing things happen because of it. That is so true. All that we have to do is give what we have to God and trust that God will use it to help others. Yep. Even though you couldn't buy your favorite gift, we can still use our gifts for God. Absolutely. And we can trust God with our gifts. Ah, uh, man. That's our big idea. Our big idea is we can trust God with our gifts. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. We can trust God with our gifts. Even the hamster wheel. Ball. Human hamster ball. Hamster ball. I don't know how God will use that, but God can use anything. Even the hamster ball that a human can get inside of. Like I said before, Carl, I hope you know I'm proud of you. Thanks, Cassie. It does feel good to be generous. I just hope that Andy... Hey, Carl. How's it going? Andy? What are you doing here? Funny story. I forgot I don't have a car, so I was curious. Can you give me a ride? <laughs> wow, Andy. Don't you think you're asking for a little too much? It's okay, Cassie. I got this. I can be generous. generous. Jinx! 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 No. Jinx! 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 J
When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing go to waste. So they gathered them and they filled 12 baskets with the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Isn't that crazy? It's mind-blowingly craziness. So crazy. But I just like how Jesus says, yeah, sit down. You can be shh and let me do my thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's also crazy is that this little boy freely gave what he had. Mm -hmm. He saw what he had and it wasn't very much. And he looked around and he saw 5,000 people. That's our entire town of Vagreville. So imagine if you had your Lunchables lunch kit and you had Jesus in front of you with other adults trying to figure out how to feed these people, our whole town. And you go up with your Lunchables and ask if that would be helpful. That is crazy. That is so brave of the little boy, first of all, to go up to adults and ask if this would be helpful, especially when it was so little compared to all the people that were in this field. 5,000 people. So he goes and he freely gives what he had. He gave his lunch away. So really, this little boy maybe was expecting not to eat that day because he was giving his lunch away to Jesus just to be helpful, to be generous. And it would have been enough probably for him to eat. It would have been sustaining to him, but he freely gave it to Jesus. And guess what? You guys could be the same age as this little boy. That's what's really cool. Jesus uses a kid to feed 5,000 people. So he accepted what this kid had given so freely and Jesus used it. And this is what's cool because we've been talking about our gifts this month. And this is also an example that we can trust Jesus with our gifts. So we can give our gifts and things that we're good at to Jesus and he can use them beyond our wildest dreams. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool story to be able to really look deeper and deeper into because there's so many like different meanings and, and different things that we really could talk about to this morning with with this just this one little passage here um, but that that is really the key is that this that this this young boy this kid who just gave what he had for Jesus to use and Jesus did something incredible through this gift that he had mm -hmm. and so that's the question is like what what could God be asking you to give that he could use to do something crazy cool to reach people for, for the kingdom of God, for Jesus. So that kind of segues into our... Challenge of the Week! Ah, come on! Challenge of the Week! Let's go! If they weren't awake before then... Hope I was on full blast! Let's awake. go! <laughs> okay, so your Challenge of the Week this week is you need to think how you can be generous this week. Generous. So how can you selflessly give something, whether that's your time, your giftings, maybe it's something physical, maybe a brother or a sister really likes something that you have and you let them borrow it or you let them have it. Who knows? How can you be generous this week and show somebody God's love through generosity? All right, guys, that is it for us. Okay, Calvin's going to pray for us, and then we'll be done. Yeah. God, thank you for today. Thank you for everyone who's joined us today on this uh, in this video. And I thank you that, uh, God, with the giftings and abilities and the, and the spiritual gifts that you've given us, we have an opportunity to be generous with those and be able to reach out to other people uh, and tell them about your love and, and grace and who you are. And so, God, I pray that this week that uh, you would open doors and that we'd have all that all of us would have cool opportunities to be able to use our gifts. Um, to be generous uh, to other people with and I pray that it would be a blessing to all of those people that we are be able to be generous with so I pray that you'll bless each one that's watching this that you bless their family uh, and that you would keep them safe and I pray that this week we would get closer to you than we ever have been before in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. see you later guys so see you next week <laughs>